a 64-year-old Hispanic woman had a one-year history of poor visual acuity in the left eye and a one-month history of poor visual acuity in the right eye. Visual acuity was 2150 and 2200, respectively. The slant lamp examination was unremarkable and intraocular pressure was normal. Clinical examination, fluorescein and geography and OCT confirmed the presence of a bilateral macular hole, a stage 2 macular hole in the right eye of 224 microns in size and a stage 4 macular hole in the left eye uh, of 860 microns in size. So retinal cuff of uh, fluid was surrounding the hole in both eyes. A vitrectomy was decided to be performed in the right eye with peeling of the posterior hyaloid and completing the vitrectomy under air. ICG was injected but the nurse had difficulty um, pressing the plunge of the syringe and undue force was utilized and subretinal ICG in a massive way was present uh, as shown here uh, as well as a tear from the optic disc to the macular hole through the papular macular bundle. Peeling of the internal limiting membrane was uh, performed after that to complete the procedure using Eckhart's uh, internal limiting membrane forceps and finally a fluid air exchange and an air gas exchange to finish the, finish the case. The surgical picture uh, indicates uh, with the arrow the presence of a retinal tear from the edge of the hole to the edge of the optic disc through the papular macular bundle as well as the presence of massive subretinal ICG uh, in the posterior pole. The visual acuity one month later was counting fingers with the presence of uh, subretinal ICG and RP atrophy confirmed by OCT with thinning of the retina and one year later RP atrophy and a visual acuity of 2150 uh, confirming with the OCT the presence of uh, RP uh, disturbance. Retinal nerve fiber layer thickness analysis showed the presence of uh, uh, loss of the retinal nerve fiber layer temporal to the optic disc corresponding to the uh, RP atrophy uh, site. ERG was normal. However, the electroocularogram was abnormal uh, as shown here. In addition, visual field examination was uh, evidently abnormal. Subretinal so ICG during vitrectomy for macular hole has been reported in two cases. Hirata reported a case of a patient with macular hole with subretinal ICG during vitrectomy. After the application of ICG into the vitreous, ICG was introduced in the subretinal space. RP atrophy appeared at the site of deletion. However, despite subretinal migration of ICG and RP atrophy, visual acuity improved to 2025. Brasiticos uh, reported a similar case, and despite the massive subretinal migration of ICG, visual acuity improved to 2030. Since the introduction of ICG in vitro surgery, there has been a very high success rate in macular hole surgery. However, the side effects of ICG have been also reported, including decrease in visual acuity. Recommendations if direct ICG toxicity to the RPE cells is to be avoided, decreasing the concentration of ICG solution, reducing the ICG staining time, using heavy liquid or viscoelastics to protect the macular hole, directing the injection cannula first toward the temporal macula and then towards the posterior pole, avoid aspiration within the macular hole interoperatively, reducing the light intensity while dissecting the internal limiting membrane, taking care to avoid shining the light directly at the macular hole, and maintaining a distance between the light source and the retinal surface. In summary, we report a case of macular hole surgery complicated by accidental massive subretinal ICG and retinal tear through the papular macular bundle. Our anatomic and functional results were poor with retinal and RPE atrophy and a visual acuity of 2150. Unnecessary persistence of retinal ICG should be avoided 
and precautions should be taken when using intravitreous ICG to stain the internal limiting membrane. Further studies are necessary to determine ICG safety in vitro retinal surgery. Retinal surgeons should avoid long parties before macular hole surgery. However, dancing in a Carmen Miranda hat 